You've learned how a multiplication number family, which is part of a multiplication table, can be used to solve application problems. In this lesson, you'll learn how to extend that approach to solve a new kind of application problem called a proportion problem. Up till now, you've solved two general types of problems using multiplication. Let's briefly review each type. Here's an example of the first type. One banana costs 50 cents. If each banana costs the same amount, how much do 12 bananas cost? We've used a multiplication number family to solve problems like these. In this example, we would set up the number family like this. We know that each banana costs 50 cents. So we enter dollars and .5, which represents 50 cents. We want to know the price of 12 bananas, so we enter 12 here. And we enter an X for the price of 12 bananas, since that's what we want to find. Next, we write a multiplication equation and solve for X. And we find that 12 bananas cost $6. Now, let's look at the second kind of problem using the same situation. 12 bananas cost $6. If the price of each banana is the same, how much does one banana cost? Again, we set up a multiplication number family. As always, we start with the number 1 and label it bananas to set up the unit relationship. In this case, we don't know what one banana costs. So we enter an X for the price in dollars of one banana. We know that 12 bananas cost $6. We write the multiplication equation. Then rewrite it as division. X equals $6 divided by 12. So X equals 0.5, which is half of $1, or 50 cents, which is the cost of one banana. These represent two kinds of problems. In the first problem, we started with the unit relationship, which is referred to in this case as the unit cost. The unit cost is the price of one unit, or one banana in this case. Using that, we found the price of 12 bananas by multiplying $0.5 times 12 to get $6. In the second problem, we started with the price of 12 bananas and found the unit relationship, or unit cost, which is the price of one banana. A proportion problem is just a combination of each of these two types of problems into one problem. Here's an example. 12 bananas cost $6. If each banana costs the same amount, how much do 15 bananas cost? Let's start by setting up a multiplication number family. We know that we're dealing with the price of bananas, so we start by entering bananas and the price in dollars in the table. We can also enter 1, since we know we're solving a problem involving a unit relationship. The problem doesn't tell us the price of one banana, so we can't enter a value in the box for the unit price. When we read the problem, we see that it doesn't ask us for the unit price either. That means we don't add anything in the top row of the first column. So let's start by entering what we know. We know that 12 bananas cost $6, so we can enter each of those numbers. The number the problem asks for is the price of 15 bananas, but we don't have anywhere to put that number, so we need to expand our table, like this. Now we can enter 15 bananas here. The problem asks for the price of 15 bananas, so we enter an X here. We can't solve for X yet, because we still don't know what one banana costs. So the first step in solving the problem is to find the price of one banana. If we cover up the last column, what we see is that this is exactly the same kind of problem we worked before. We start in this column and go in this direction to find the unit cost. We can find the value of one banana from the information in the second column, just as you've done before. We find the missing number by dividing 6 by 12, which gives us 0.5 which represents 50 cents in this case, since the price is in dollars. We now know the cost of one banana, so we can complete the problem. 
Now that we've found the unit cost, we don't need the middle column anymore. So let's complete the problem by pretending the middle column isn't there. Now we have a problem just like the first example we solved earlier. We know the unit price, and we want to know the price of some other number of bananas. That means we work in this direction, just as we did before. In this case, we write a multiplication equation and solve for x. We see that the price of 15 bananas is 7.5, which represents $7.50. Now, let's see the whole grid at once and review what we did. First, we used the information in the middle column and worked from right to left to find the unit cost. Then we use the unit cost and work to the right to find the price of 15 bananas. Then we use the unit cost and work to the right. In the past, we've referred to a table like this as a multiplication number family for convenience. When we use an expanded table like this, We'll refer to it as a proportion number family or a proportion family. As before, this is just for convenience. In both cases, all we're doing is reducing the size of the multiplication table to make it easier to work with. Now let's look at a couple more examples using a proportion number family. Here's one. There are 70 pieces of gum in 14 packs. If all packs have the same number of pieces, how many pieces are in six packs? We solve the problem with the same approach we used in the first example, but there's one slight difference, as you'll see. We'll come back to that after we've solved the problem. First, we set up a proportion number family. Since this is just an expanded multiplication number family, we start by entering a 1 for the unit relationship here. The problem is about sticks of gum in a pack. There are several pieces in each pack, so we label the bottom row packs, and the top row pieces. Now we enter what we know. We know we're dealing with two different numbers of packs, 6 and 14, so we enter those here. Notice that we enter those in numerical order, that is, the 6 comes before the 14. We know that 14 packs contain 70 pieces of gum, so we enter that here. The problem asks for the number of pieces in 6 packs, so we enter an X here. Since that's the unknown number the problem asks us to find. To solve the problem, we first have to find the value for pieces in the unit relationship. In other words, we first must find the price per piece. In this case, we can find the constant factor for the table using the last column. We know that 70 divided by 14 equals 5. That means the constant factor is 5 in every column. In the first column, we multiply 1 times 5, which is 5. That means one pack contains 5 pieces, which we enter here. Now that we know the number of pieces of gum per pack, which is the unit relationship, we can solve for x. We multiply 5 times 6 and get 30. That means that there are 30 pieces of gum in 6 packs, which is the answer to the question in the problem. Now let's look at how this is slightly different from the first problem. It has to do with the position of the unknown value x in the table. Here are the tables for the two problems after we enter the values given in the problem. In the first problem, the x for the unknown was in the third column, which has the larger of the two numbers given in the problem on the bottom row. In the second problem, the x was in the second column, which has the smaller of the two numbers given in the problem on the bottom row. As you've just seen, there's no difference in how these problems are solved. In each case, we still do the same two steps in the same order. First, we find the value for the product in the unit relationship. Next, we use that to find the value for the unknown number, x. 
It doesn't matter which column the unknown number is in. One last example. It takes nine eggs to make three batches of cookies. How many eggs does it take to make 18 batches? We noted before that when a proportion is involved in a problem, there must be a constant factor. We know that there is a constant involved in this situation because the recipe for each batch of cookies is the same. That means we start by setting up a proportion number family. We enter one and we label it batch for each batch. Next, we enter the label for eggs since we're dealing with eggs per batch. Now we enter the values given in the problem. We're dealing with three batches and 18 batches. So we enter those values here. Next, we know that nine eggs are used for three batches. So we enter nine here. The problem asks us to find the number of eggs in 18 batches. So we enter an X here. The first step is to find the unit relationship, that is, the number of eggs in one batch. To do that, we need to find the constant factor, using the numbers in the second column. We know that 9 is a product, and 3 is one of its factors, so we divide 9 by 3 and get the other factor, 3. We enter this in the unit relationship here. We can now use that to find the value of x. We know that both 3 and 18 are factors. And x is their product, so we write this equation. So x equals 54, which is the answer to the question in the problem. 18 batches of cookies will require 54 eggs. In the remainder of this lesson, you'll solve proportion problems like these.